Oh, hey guys, welcome to JKFX tutorial number one. Today we're going to talk about how to set up Flash. First, open Flash. I use Flash CS6 because I'm cheap. I'm not a big believer in monthly subscription fees if I can avoid them. Okay, so here's the opening screen. A lot of people get confused when they first see this screen. That's understandable because there's no call to action and it's kind of confusing. So what you want to do is you want to create a new ActionScript 3.0 file. Once you've created some other files, you'll see things under open a recent item. But for now, all you really need to worry about is ActionScript 3.0. So you click on that and you've got your new file. The windows that are set up by default are not at all what we want to use for our daily production. I'm going to show you how I set things up. You can set it up however you'd like. Feel free to you know, take these ideas and spin off of them and, and do other crazy things. I'll just show you how the interface works so that you can customize your own windows. So if you grab this gray bar, anywhere along the gray bar, it'll take both of these tabs, both Timeline and Motion Editor, and move them. And so now they're not docked, so now they're in their own little window. And the gray bar got a darker gray bar above it that I can then drag around. Both of the bars work. You'll notice that when I move this near um, a portion of the window that's like a divider, a blue bar appears and it kind of ghosts in where it's going to go. So I want it down in the bottom. So I went until it did the blue bar all the way across and then it docks it in the bottom. I never use a motion editor. So you can grab this tab. There's no way to close it unless you undock it. And then you see a little X. It's a little clunky, but you get the idea. So I pulled out motion editor by just grabbing the tab, not the dark gray part. So I grab the motion editor tab, pull it out, close that bad boy. All right, then we got some other weird biz going on over here. You see that I've got the properties tab and then all these icons and this is kind of nice you can actually uh, collapse some of your features down which I actually do use but for now I want to expand them out by clicking on the expand panels or you can double click on the small gray dark bar area to do the same thing okay there's absolutely no reason why I need to double up my windows here when I've got all this blank space over here so the color and swatches, I really like those, so I'm going to grab both of those, undock them, and then dock them above the properties bar. The transform, info, and align are all together here. I like to put transform next to my properties, because they're kind of similar to each other. So I put that tab over here docked with properties. The info tab you don't really need. You can close that. And then because the line is so small, like the color, I like to put it up here. All right, motion presets I never use. Pull that over here and close it. And library, I can grab that tab and put it down here below the properties. So I just put it down until that blue bar appears. And I've got my library down here. Project, I never use. Some other windows that I do find useful are Scenes. So if you go into Window, Other Panels, you've got Scene right here. This is great when you're doing a, an animated short film. You can have multiple scenes where it cuts from one shot to another. Just dock that next to the library. You don't use it very often, so you just kind of keep it down here. Um, Another great window if you're scripting a game for Flash is the Actions panel. Normally this is brought up with the F9 key. Um, this one I like to put in the um, horizontal or the vertical uh, blue slot here because it's it's code, right? So it's going to stack really high, and then I can just keep it minimized whenever I'm not doing code. And you can even squish this over further so it's just the Actions icon. Another great one is Edit, Find, and Replace. This is weird. It's not under the Windows panel. It's under Edit, which 
I don't know why, because it brings up a whole window. And I like to dock that one here as well. So if I want, I can pull this out and show both of them, which is kind of messy. But what I normally do is I just click on the icon, do whatever I need to do, and then I can click on it again and it's gone. Another option is to dock these together, which is less messy and it can actually pop out. Now that I think of it, this is probably the best way to go. So find and replace and actions, two very handy things. Alright, so we've got a window set up. Now let's talk about keyboard shortcuts. There's a lot of funky things in Flash that you kind of need to customize and tailor to your own self. So first off, the brush tool. If I hit B on the keyboard and then I hit B again, I get the uh, spray brush tool. Hang on. Adobe Standard is set up. Okay, well you might get the spray brush tool if your setup is not like mine. To turn that off, you go Edit Keyboard Shortcuts, and then you can come in here. The first step to set up all your keyboard shortcuts is to duplicate the set. So I'm just going to call this Kaiser Time, because it's Kaiser Time. All right. So in Kaiser Time, I can now say, these are all the drawing menu commands that I want or you can go to the tools panel commands and let's see why B for brush ah see spray brush is set to B interesting so tools panel spray brush I don't want that to be B subtract to take it out cool done and done there's other annoying things like for example object drawing set to the J key people bump the J key all the time I know I do so I like to take that off because I never use object drawing. Not true, I very rarely use object drawing. Maybe we'll talk about that in another tutorial. All right, so then you come down to, no, not that, drawing menu commands. Um, there's a few other shortcuts that we're gonna set up real quick. Just trust me on this, these are gonna be really useful for you. So you go under modify, Shape, smooth. Add a shortcut. Control, one. Change. It's going to give you this error saying it's already set to 100%. I don't ever use that command, so that's fine. All right. Expand fill. Control, two. Change. Reassign. Sorry, convert lines to fill. Control two. <laughs> and then expand fills control three. There we go. So we got smooth control one, convert lines to fills control two, and expand fill control three. That's everything under shape. So then we go to modify transform, flip vertical. I like to set to control five. And can flip horizontal, I like to do control four because the four looks like an upside down H, which is what horizontal starts with. That's how I remember it. Okay. So we got our keyboard shortcuts all set up. There's one other thing about keyboard shortcuts that um, I want to go over. There's actually a couple things. Let's see here. Uh, this is going to be a little involved, so stay with me here. Adobe did not make this one simple for us, but we're going to bear with it together and hopefully get there. What you're going to want to do is install a little add-on that I made. Don't worry, it's totally free. Um, you can get it through the Adobe website. It's all registered on there and everything. And I'll show you how to uh, get to that. I'll include a link to these websites in the description so you can find them a little more easily. If you're using CS6 or CC, you can get this plugin. If you're using an older version of Flash, CS5 or older, uh, you're not going to be able to do it. So I apologize, they just don't support old versions anymore. Um, it's not a necessary tool that I'm going to give you, but it's pretty handy. I, I use it all the time, so um, you can get by without it, but I like it a lot. So the first step is to set up the Adobe Extension Manager CS6 or CC 
on your computer. Um, if you have CC, you can also install another way, just if you have the uh, Creative Cloud desktop app installed. Uh, that'll do it just fine. You don't need the extension manager. But for the purposes of this tutorial, oh my gosh, don't show this message again. Thanks, Windows. OK. Anyway, so you come down here. If you have Windows, install the zip. If you have Mac OS, you install the DMG file. Pretty straightforward. Once you get it installed, it will look like this. Dark gray, it'll show all the uh, Adobe products you have installed. And you can look at the different add-ons you have installed for each. It's kind of handy. OK, we'll get back to that in a sec. So then you want to go to the Adobe add-ons website to find the add-on that I made. By the way, I got to do a shout out to my friend, Bo Brewer. He helped me learn how to script JavaScript that I was able to build this tool. It was really helpful. So we're going to look up keyframe jumper in the search. Wait for the internet. And there we go. Keyframe jumper by Jason Kaiser. It's free. Go ahead and click on that guy. Now, if you have CS6, clicking the install button does zip, as far as I can tell. It doesn't really do anything for you. So you have to click where to find it. Download, install your add-on another way. Download using Extension Manager. Remember, I had you install Extension Manager. Download Keyframe Jumper. So this will download the .zxp file, which you just go ahead and open. It'll open with Extension Manager. You get all the information on the install of what it is. Uh, this is just a bunch of legal jargon Adobe puts in to everything. And then the description, where I kind of explain what it does. We're going to talk more in depth about it in other tutorials. This is just getting things set up. It's been successfully installed. In order to change for changes to take effect, you must close, then restart Flash CS6. OK. Come over here to Flash. You know, I want to make sure that I keep this window set up. So what I'm going to do is down here in this drop down, I'm going to say um, new workspace, which is a misnomer. It's actually save the current workspace. And we'll just name it Kaiser Time. You say, OK. So now when I close Flash and some other student comes along in the lab and tries to meddle with all the windows, I can always find my window set up and, and set it back to that. OK, so I restart Flash so that my new keyframe jumper works. It's going to be freaking sweet once this gets going. Create a new file. All right, so it should show up under Commands. You should see Next Keyframe and Previous Keyframe, which is totally cool. You've installed a new plugin to Flash. Congratulations. Go to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts. Go to the Commands window. And nudge in Flash, like next frame and previous frame, are comma and period, or greater than and less than on your keyboard. So if I want to not just nudge but jump, I would do alt period for next keyframe, and alt comma for previous keyframe. And again, we'll go into how to implement this in future future episodes. Stay tuned. OK, so I got all my keyboard shortcuts set up. I've got all my windows set up. One last thing, I got to do a call out to um, one of my favorite tools of all time. And that's this bad boy. The uh, minimize this, clean up the desktop. Jeez, so messy. Um, this is the Logitech G13. And I absolutely love it. I've been using it for many years. Uh, Logitech is not a sponsor of mine at all. Um, it's just this tool that I found. There's other kinds of uh, game pads that you can use. It's so nice because I can jump between my next keyframe and previous keyframe with the left and right. I can zoom in and out with the up and down. I've got my brush, my paint fill, and all these other things on all these keys. I've got spacebar for panning down here, the alt key. It's just it's so nice because I don't have to do any hunt and peck uh, across the keyboard when I'm when I'm working. It really speeds up my workflow. 
And if you're curious, um, this is my key, key setup for Flash. Um, on the uh, M1 settings, it's all of these buttons that I use. On the M2 settings, I just changed the top row. So that's the only difference. So yeah, it just makes life really easy. So there you have it. That's tutorial number one, getting Flash all set up. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any feedback or comments, feel free to leave them there for me and uh, see you in the next video where we actually learn how to use some of this stuff. Have a good one.